Good evening, everyone. I'm Don. Can you hear me? Yeah, let me get here. The dogs are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is our course. Our course is not. Uh, I think it's fine. I, I don't think our course is as cute as this. Guess what we do? Can you guess? Uh, this is our vision. Our vision is to help people and family. We are very passionate. We hope that they can be transformed and live with a hope and a purpose. What do we do? Our our. Yeah, the people in the back can hear us. Oh, you cannot hear. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, can you hear? Okay, okay. Our course is not as sexy and as cute, but equally meaningful. Oh, I'm the one. <laughs> I'm a, okay. We help three groups of people. Our office is located at a very happening place. Guess where? Gelang. <laughs> They're located at Gelang. Okay, um, at Gelang, we started with halfway house. So we help ex offenders. We have another two services under this ring. We help abused teenage girls as well as women with unsupported pregnancies. Okay, this photo was taken recently. We celebrated Hari Raya with our residents. You heard the name residents. We don't, don't call them beneficiaries. We don't call them clients. We call them residents because here at High Point Community Services, we provide com accommodation services for all three groups of clients. That means 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So round the clock, we have people there to help them. So this is uh, our first service. We help ex-offenders. Every year, there are more than 10,000 people released from the prisons. So we are one of the places they can go. So when they leave the prisons, when they have been there for years, come out without families, without friends, without a job, and very new to Singapore because they have been there for years. A lot of things they don't know. They don't know how to take MRTs. So they can choose to come to us. So they can be with us for the first six months. We help them to find jobs. We provide accommodations for them and help them to find long-term accommodation. So this photo was taken recently. It was a very happy occasion. We invited families to go as well. You can see some with families, some without. Then during the program, we asked them to write, maybe you can write some riches. So some of them um, share, they say, oh, I'm very happy. Uh, my family is here to support me. Some say, I don't have family, but I'm very happy in this family. And another one write, oh, Pa, don't worry about me because I'm at high point. It's very meaningful for us. This is what we do and help them. And the other program that we do is called Day Spring. Under Day Spring, we have two centers. You can see them. There are two bungalows. One is Day Spring Residential Treatment Center for abused teenage girls. The other one, New Life Center, is for uh, women with unsupported pregnancies. Uh, in short, we call it RTC. This is a place whereby uh, the girls who are as young as 12 to 16 years old, they're being abused. Most of them happen at home. So either sexually or physically. So when court cases close, they will be referred to us. So they will stay with us. We provide a very safe, secure environment for them with education and also therapeutic clinical programs to help, help them to heal, to overcome the emotional um, uh, abuse. And this is the other center. We help women and families with unsupported pregnancies. Uh, we empower them, we provide resources for them to get them prepared for the baby, for the new rules. We provide financial planning and also all the relevant referral services for them. So all the way until they give birth, if they decided they don't want their babies, um, we will arrange for adoption for them. But if they would like to be a mother, so we will help them 
to go through this role for the first four months. Okay. So to help so many people, where do we get the funding? Um, for the halfway house, we are half supported, 50% supported by SCORE or Yellow Ribbon Funds, which you are more familiar. We need to raise the other half. And for New Life Centre, it totally depends on fundraising donations. And RTC, 50% will be funded by main ministries. So every year we need to raise more than 1 million. And how do we do it? We organize fundraising events. Upcoming one, we have a dinner. Uh, what we first did was we went through our database in Excel spreadsheet, thousands of them, because we have been in Singapore for 20 years, thousands of them. Who was the one? Me. <laughs> I was the one sitting in front of computer, going through all the names, addresses, how much they donated. And uh, we wanted to know um, whether they are repeated donors, how long they have donated, how much they have donated, each of them, and whether they are staying together, maybe husband and wife also donated. We don't want to send two appeal letters. So with that, it took me a few days to sort it out. Do you think there will be errors? Of course. Pet ladies and guys. I'm sure you must be thinking, there must be a better way, why? <laughs> why you spend so much time? There must be a better way, there is technology there. But we don't know, we don't have the support, we don't have the budget. So here we are, we are appealing for you to help us with this CR, CRM program. And we are very happy that you have adopted us as one of the charities for the project. And we need your help. With your help, we can help more people. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Don. So up next, you hear from. All right. So Elisha talked about making an impact, right? So I thought I should um, add an animation to my slides to make it more impactful. So let's see if it works. <laughs> yeah. Technology. What will they think of next? So. I'm not the dog guy, uh, that was Gabe. We look somewhat similar, but you can, you can remember me as not the dog guy, but my name is also Ted. And I actually started programming when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but in 1998, there wasn't a lot of things on the internet, including resources on how to do programming. So the way I did this was, I would actually go to the public library after school and I would memorize from a book some snippets of JavaScript, and then I would take the bus home and I would type them into Notepad and save it and see what it did. So luckily, a lot has happened in almost 20 years, so I'm confident that uh, most of you can actually become quite proficient programmers in only 10 weeks' time, given that you put in the, the hard work. So uh, I work for, for Tinkerbox, we actually have uh, two coaches in, in this batch. Uh, I also do quite a bit of open source. I spend a lot of time working on a tool called Rubocop, which essentially automates a lot of nitpicking that I have to do at work. Uh, I do some things for the Ruby SG community, uh, and I'm also somewhat of a uh, tech ladies veteran in that I was in the first batch. Uh, so I'm a servant of our benevolent dictatress, Elisha. <laughs> so you heard a little bit about the problems that, uh, we're, that our NGO is facing. So it has been said that every app can be thought of as a glorified spreadsheet. Uh, and that is in no way demeaning. It is actually true. But I think it becomes particularly uh, clear in our case because they're already using a spreadsheet right now. Uh, so for one, we want to build a donor registry and simplify data entry for uh, whoever is tasked with that. We want to create some donor profiles so it's, uh, it's easy to see uh, which donors are in the same household, for example. And I think most importantly, we want to 
uh, create a reporting generator because creating a report shouldn't take a couple of days, it should take a couple of seconds if you ask me. Uh, given time, we might also do an integration with uh, an email sending system like MailChimp. So how are we building it? Well, we'll be using uh, Ruby on Rails, obviously. Uh, we will use GitHub to collaborate. Uh, when you're a number of people working on the same application, it can be quite easy to step uh, on each other's toes. So we'll be using GitHub for, for version control and you will uh, learn a few of the tricks that we use to prevent conflicts in our code. <coughs> so I actually managed to get one, one dog into my slides. <laughs> Uh, yes, this is the mascot for, for Trello, which is a task board that we're using. Uh, and we will also be using Slack for, for communication. Uh, and we will be putting all our code on, onto Heroku. And all these tools that we're using are essentially the exact same tools that we use in Tinkerbox. So uh, both the workflows and the tools you're using um, will be adopted straightly from a, a Ruby on Rails agency. Uh, so yeah, join us for great fun, okay? <laughs> so a couple of things. So first of all, for those who are programmers or people who are watching the video, you don't need to be bold to be a tech ladies coach. Um, and <laughs> no, no. Second of all, an interesting um, tidbit. Ted wants to call his team members the Ted ladies. I vetoed against it. <laughs> OK, up next, we will hear from David, who will share with us more about I Am Talented. David.